Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, Anna Morfides with Mending Cars Counseling. And today's video is going to be all about why is it not helpful to be chasing any of our exes? So first of all, I really want to reframe the word um, chasing into something that is more uh, pleasant to the ears because I feel when we are chasing what we're actually doing is seeking for something we're yearning for something there's a desire that we have for something and then depending on our attachment style then our actions on how we go about to receive that which we want aka chasing um, it depends on our attachment style, how we go about um, receiving what it is that we're wanting or when we're looking for it, it depicts our actions or what we're doing. So when we are born as children, we don't really seek anything. We, we know that by simply crying, someone's going to come and tend to our needs, right? Like innately we know as humans when we're born that um, needs are natural to have and they're going to be met and we don't necessarily chase it we just know it's coming because that's also how the law of attraction uh, works as well we receive things that just come to us because we just have this innate knowing that we are worthy and that's how it is so when we are now children and we're not receiving our, our basic needs, we will develop an attachment style that is going to be not the secure one. It's going to be disorganized attachment style. It's going to be um, an avoided attachment style. And the avoidant attachment style falls into two categories of fearful avoidant and dismissive avoidant or um, anxious attached style or it's also called ambiguous ambivalent attachment style usually the person that develops the anxious attachment style is the one that's going to be chasing because when they are children and they're not receiving their basic needs um them like the knowing of I'm a human, I'm supposed to be unconditionally loved, I'm supposed to be receiving all these, and when we're not receiving them, that confusion for the child of that goes against our knowing, and then it starts to eat at them a little bit because they're trying to understand why am I not receiving what I'm supposed to be receiving, right, as far as um, the basic needs, safety, security, to be seen and to be soothed by the primary caregiver. So if you're experiencing other things, then the child internalizes that as if it's their fault. Therefore, they're going to start to develop attachment styles that are unhealthy, not only to beliefs about themselves, core beliefs such as um, I'm not lovable, I'm not worthy, bound to be rejected, I am defective. There's a whole array of things that the child starts to imagine within their head to make sense of why they're not receiving what they innately would feel is something that they would have as a human, right? And that carries on into our adulthood as well. We're still seeking for that same experience, but now instead of seeking it from my primary caregiver, we are seeking it from our, our lovers. And we know that it's it should be part of our human experience. So that's why it's not really so much chasing, uh, but rather rather than like, we have this knowing that we want to be experiencing this and we know it's natural to be experiencing this from our lovers, but where the trouble is actually um, starting to arise within the anxious attached person is the fact that 99% of the time, they're going to draw in an avoidant into their life. So those two attachment styles clash in the way that they go about to receive that connection, that intimacy, that love, that, that, that which they haven't um, had a chance to experience yet. 
So it seems like the anxious avoidant is going to be the chaser because they, their, their attachment style is to cling, whereas the avoidant attachment style is to run, um, disassociate, disengage, not like, so what seems normal to the anxious attached person, which was completely my personality, right? I want to talk about it right there. And then I want to solve the issue. I want to understand why, if someone is like pulling away from me and I was chasing love my entire life, not only before my super long relationship, but even during my relationship, I, I was chasing compliments, chasing date nights, um, chasing, uh, connection, chasing intimacy. I was always that chaser because I was the one that was anxiously attached and our style of behave, like our style of behavior to receive that, what we, we want. And we believe to be part of like innately part of our human experience. We go about like, going for it, wanting to grab it, wanting to take it, clinging, but it's a little bit in an unhealthy way. So, and it is only in an unhealthy way that I describe it to be unhealthy because I remember what I was like when I was in my anxious attachment versus now that I have a more secure attachment style. In my anxious attachment style, if somebody was pulling away from me, I felt it in my tummy. Like it felt like this sickening feeling of like, why is this happening to me again? Why can't someone love me? Like, why, why? It, it, it's like my body kept the score, like m much like that book, um, The Body Keeps the Score. My body was keeping the score of its childhood when it was like not receiving what it needed and then it accumulated in my tummy. So now every time as an adult, it would feel like, it, like it's like the like sickening feeling. I don't have that anymore because now I know that I'm worthy of it all. I don't have any unhelpful core beliefs about myself that I'm not good enough, that I'm not lovable. Yes, of course, I'm going to have like a flash of it here and there, but overall I, I know my worth and just like every other human being, I am also worthy of having this experience. Um, but yes. So again, why is not, why why is it not okay though to chase um an ex so once we understand what our attachment style is and then reframe the word chasing to like seeking and then we know that we don't need to cling on to anyone anymore because we're not that inner wounded child trying to cling on our mothers or our fathers to receive that love that we've been yearning for for or like even knew that it was like innately should have been part of our experience and that it wasn't. So we're clinging on to that person. Whereas the avoidant, they will develop a coping mechanism that is the complete opposite. They're going to be so, um, what do you call it? Like they withdraw within their own selves and they sort of cut off that emotional supply. They don't want to feel it because if your emotional body is not being met by your primary caregiver, its needs, then you just cut that supply off. So then you don't have to feel it's, it's void. So then they're dissociating from that. Whereas the anxious attached person is completely immersed into that. So yeah, those, that's why those two clash, but when we chase the person, so then they would be anxiously, no, the anxious is like the chaser. When they chase the avoidance, um, that repels them even more away because we're supposed to be letting it come to us. So in that case, we can just take the time to understand what it is that we're chasing for in the, in the first place. What are we seeking, I should say, more that this person we think um, has to give us? 
is it because they're making us feel worthy or um, loved or what is it that this person is making us feel that we are seeking and we want to go get it? And then once we understand that when the avoidant doesn't really, it's so hard, they feel trapped if they express emotion, there's like nowhere else to go because they've never had a chance to like be safe and secure with expressing their emotions. So it feels relief to them when their relationship is done with the, with the anxious person. They feel relief because they don't have to deal with it. So giving time and space for this experience to take place, A, for the avoidant to understand why, why is it that they're running in the first place? What are they running from? And then for the anxious person to see what am I actually seeking or chasing? Like, what is it that I'm wanting from this person? Uh, and then we work to give that to ourselves, right? So if it's more validation, we give ourselves more validation. If we feel um, rejected, so we don't want to feel that rejection, so we chase the person, so we're like, please don't leave me because I'm feeling rejected and that feeling is really shitty, then we allow ourselves to feel that damn rejection. Allow it to just flow right through your body and remember that it's there to be released, right? But if you don't, if somebody doesn't ignite it out of you, then you're not going to be able to release it. And then you immerse yourself in the complete opposite. Um, I am always accepted because I accept myself. I accept all parts of myself, all shitty things that I've done in my life out of my wounds. I accept all parts of myself because even sometimes when I say that, I don't really want to believe it because, you know, I'm like, I've done some really questionable things out of my wounds in my life and I've hurt people. Um, and I want to like really guilt myself and shame myself, but that's not going to help me. It's just going to keep me in this continuous cycle of like receiving more things to feel guilt and shame for. So I accept all parts of myself. I forgive myself. I accept all parts of myself. And then that's what you keep doing. Whatever it is that you're feeling that this person or whatever feeling you want to be avoiding, right? Because my rejection wound and then my abandoned wound. It's like, don't abandon me. Don't leave me. Can't you see me? I'm worthy. I'm worthy of love. You do that to yourself. So you give yourself the worth through affirmations, through meditation. You do all these things. And I swear to you, you're not going to regret not chasing this person. Because even with people that I work with, the minute they let go, of the idea that this person holds the key to their happiness and they cannot live without them. Once they understand why there's a need to chase this person in the first place and they do their work, I swear to you, I've had people have someone else come in once they completely let go and surrender to the universe and surrender to the knowing that yes, there's just a lesson to be learned from this experience. I'm learning to heal my abandonment wound, my rejection wound, my worthiness wound, whatever it is. Boom, right the next day, someone else has come in. Uh, so I've had experiences with people I work with. Right the next day, someone has come in. Um, within a week, someone else has come in. The minute they let go of this person, they drop the idea. They let go of any expectations. They cut the energetic cord that kind of stimulates, sorry, not stimulates. What's that word? Simulates the, so my, so picture me. So me as a little kid clinging onto my mother who called me names and uh, physically abused me. Like I was clinging, I was like clinging to her to give me the love that she wasn't able to give me because she grew up even in worse conditions than I did. Her stepmom was terrible to her. But anyway, no blame to anyone, but I'm just saying that little girl continued to exist into her adult relationship. So I like I'm clinging on to my person and like I'm wanting them to make me feel better. But in reality, I can only do that for myself. Once I understood what was happening to me, my anxious attachment cell and my abandonment wound and my rejection wound. So then yeah, so the energetic cord 
Like if you imagine like that energetic cord of me clinging onto my mother and now as an adult clinging on like that energy that I'm putting onto this person because I'm like, no, come back to me, come back to me. Like give me all that I'm, that I'm lacking from within, like give it to me. Cut that shit off, cut it off. Like there's beautiful cord cutting meditations that you can do. You can protect yourself. You can vision yourself like in a, in a cocoon. You pull your energy back, pull your energy back. And I swear I have clients that are true testaments. They will, someone else comes in and is greater than the experience that they had. It's not like it's a better person, but it's a greater experience that is reflective of the inner work that they've done themselves. Because remember, the outer world is always a mirror. So if you want to know where you're writing within your core beliefs, just watch how people around you show up. And not everyone is, because some relationships are static and some are dynamic, like Deepak Chopra says, but the ones that are dynamic, like for me, is always with a masculine energy. I know, depending on how the masculine energy shows up with me, where I am writing within my core beliefs. So it went from me hearing masculine energy call me the worst of names to now the complete opposite because I don't speak to myself like that anymore. I've done so much work on myself. I've healed so much that my abandonment wound, my rejection wound, so I don't really receive that anymore. There's remnants, but the the good is completely overcoming or is like more than the than the negative. So and if you can ask the question, why me, why this, why now, every time you get broken up, I swear to you, or why you feel like you need to chase someone, or yes, yeah, so when you're broken up, there is always going to be an answer. Is it because you need to heal your abandonment wound? Is it because this person was not fulfilling and you were too scared to leave? So universe rearranged everything because they knew this person was not for your highest good or to your fullest potential and because maybe you didn't have enough strength to leave so universe stepped in to let them go what is it why did that happen for you there's always going to be a reason why it happened for you and you, you never know like this person might rise to meet the new you or naturally like they get replaced by a different version but there is always going to be someone else i promise you this is true like always always and then not one time have I had someone work with me and then they someone else comes in their life and they're like, Anna, I really miss the other person. No, they're astonished and astounded by how the new experience of their lover is compared to the new experience of how they are experiencing themselves from within themselves after they do the work, if that makes sense. And they... Yeah, and every time that they think, oh, they could, I couldn't get any better than this. Yes, there's always a better and greater version because there's always going to be a better and greater version of yourself. So the more you work on yourself, of course, the higher the vibration of the person that's going to be with you. That's just natural laws of energy. That's just how it works. So I hope you like this video. If... um you liked anything about it give it a thumbs up if you have any questions about it please do let me know i think that i answered it fully and everything that was popping into my mind about um chasing seeking and having the knowing that whatever is meant to come and find you it will we just have to make the room for it and once we're strong enough to make the room for it you will be so pleasantly surprised of what comes to you and don't ever think that there's anything wrong with you there's nothing wrong with us it's just our anxious attachment style that propels us to become the chaser in a connection and then due to the um, nature of the avoidant of course as the name implies they're going to avoid it they're going to be running so there's nothing wrong with us and even in the tw twin flame community i know that there's concept of like chaser and runner is um existing and one of the twins is going to be a chaser, one is going to be the runner. Let's even reframe that in any connection. Someone has to do the start. Someone has to be the catalyst for the healing. So maybe the chaser is the one that is the catalyst for both the healings, for themselves and for the other person. With all my love and gratitude, thank you so much. Um, I love to hear from you. And if you have any topics that you want me to um, speak on, I would love to hear from 
yes, I would love to hear it. And uh, yeah, I will see you next time.